Coming up on the FRC Open Alliance Show 2491, No Mythic joins us from Minnesota, and we're happy to have them back again this year to showcase some of their awesome progress they're doing for the Reefscape game. We'll be showcasing their Crayon Cat as we dive into some of their different concepts that they're using, including a really interesting one for their deep climb as well, too. So make sure you take a look at that. We'll be going into programming as well, too, how they're utilizing a and an FM, FOM system, uh, including some of their programming goals as well, too, and maybe some future plans that they have as they get ready for a week one competition. So let's learn more about No Mythic here on the FRC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. Welcome back from last year here on the Open Alliance Show. We have 2491 No Mythic coming in from Minnesota. And we have Liam, Aiden, and Zach here joining us. They go through all sorts of things, and we can't wait to jump into how they're approaching the Rescape game. So, guys, why don't you introduce yourselves, let us know what you do on the team, and then we'll hop right into your goals for the robot. Hey there. My name is Liam. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the team captain here on 2491 No Mythic, and it is my fifth year of being a student here. Uh, hi, I'm Zach Smith. Um, I'm one of our leaders on the programming uh, sub team, and this is my second year uh, on No Mythic. Hi, uh, my name is Aiden Keefe. Uh, I'm the design captain on No Mythic. I've been here four years. So, guys, you know, yeah. looking at you know this game and Rescape here, I want to go into your goals, so what you, how you approach this so far. Let's jump right into that, and so much more to cover here. Yeah, so obviously our first goal is to drive. We're running a swerve drive this year. We're making it a little extra low. Uh, we are doing the uh, reef coral one through four. We're doing L3 and L3, L2, three, and four, uh, really specified. And then the L1, we're going to do in an uncontrolled manner. Um, and then we're also going to do an algae pickup from the reef as best that we can uh, and put it into the processor. Now we have been looking at Chief Delphi and a lot of conversations around strategy have come up. And so we'll see if we can slip in an algae mechanism to score in the net on top. Um, we considered scoring coral in the, uh, in, sorry, we considered picking up coral from the ground, but we decided against that after a little bit of prototyping. Aiden, you wanna talk about that? Yeah, so one of the things we said at kickoff was there were gonna be a few different tasks that we would wait until after prototyping to see if they were really feasible. Um, and with coral and with algae from the ground, we made prototypes that worked and definitely developed ways to do it, um, but ended up seeing that with the rest of our prototypes and the systems that we were making to build the simplest robot we could, we decided to, at least for now, not add them. Yeah. Um, so I think those are our goals for the robot right now. Um, should we dive into archetypes? Yeah. Right. So uh, we like to call our general like robot concept an archetype, um, but this year, we really just like wrapped up that process of really defining like what is a robot going to look like. Um, so this year we are going with, we don't have an exact name for it, but um, the idea is, is that on one side of the robot, we're going to pick up on the other side, we're going to score. So with that, we have ended up deciding to go with on our crayon CAD, um, an elevator on one side of the robot and a funnel to pick up from the feeder station on the other side of the robot. Um, so this was one of three main archetypes that we wanted to choose from, um, and we had that conversation very recently. Um, other archetypes that we were definitely considering was um, some kind of elevator or extension on a pivot towards the back of the robot to be able to both have the end effector pick up and score on different sides of the robot, um, as well as having multiple elevators or methods of extension on a robot to be able to manipulate a coral and an algae end effector individually. With that as well, uh, one of the big decisions we made is that we actually want to manipulate algae and coral in different end effectors. Um, this was a really big debate of ours of which would be simplest or best for our team. Um, but this was a big decision that was kind of driving the rest of the design. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the climb decisions we're looking at making? Yeah, so in the past 48 hours, uh, we've done a lot of geometry work uh, to figure out what kind of climb would be feasible for us with our current archetype. 
Originally, our idea was, great, we'll save some space off the side of the robot, figure it out later. Um, but right now, we're currently considering uh, using our funnel as our client. Um, right now, we're actually figuring out some of the geometry to see how we can exactly do that. But the general idea is the funnel will have a stowed position or a position in which it can actually pick up from the feeder station throughout the match. And then once we get to end game, the funnel is going to do some weird rotation to then be able to pick up the cage and then rotate it back to its stowed position, which should make us climb. Um, we're getting a lot of inspiration from this um, from Pantherbots um, in 4481 um, around this general type of climb. We've definitely been looking at a lot of their prototypes. So is that going to be you a low climb or a high climb for you guys then? Yeah, so we are going to be going for a deep climb. Deep yeah. climb. Gotcha. Do you want to show off our prototype for it? Yeah. Here, I'll pull up the cage. Let me go. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the more recent prototypes we've been doing is generally around how we're actually going to grip onto it. Um, so this is a design we were kind of thinking about, once again, taking some inspiration from other teams. The idea around this one is we are using a W shape to be able to center ourselves. And whilst it's a little finicky with this, these L brackets on here would be sprung. So the idea is, is we can just ram into the cage. L brackets are going to get out of the way. And then once we're in, going to latch up. Um, I think it's a little bit hard to show here, but the next step of that is then actually rotating the cage. And that's where the funnel would come into place. And you'll see that on the screen if I could point you there. Um, we are, that is the um, prototype working on the H, which is pretty cool. So when you were looking at from this initial prototype testing on here, do you know like how quick you're able to run into the cage and still have it snap on or anything like that? Or do you have a general plan of how quickly uh, maybe you can accomplish that? You want to answer that? Um, I think right now we haven't uh, tested this on a, a full drivetrain. That's one of our next steps and the things that we're working on actually getting it together tonight. Um, that is really where we're at right now. We do something called rough or precise prototyping. And this is an example of a rough prototype, something that's done very quickly and not driven at all. But the next step is now to do it in a precise manner and actually get it on that drivetrain and have it be run. So, um, and the, so the other thing I want to ask you that you mentioned before, you know, when you're showing your crayon cab, that that might be part of the, your funnel that you have as well too. So is that like attached on the bottom of the funnel or where are you looking at actually putting that on your robot? So right now that's kind of the big debate. Um, the initial idea was, yeah, we put it on um, what is then closest to the end effector. So more towards the center of the robot, um, which when rotated would then be on the top. Um, but right now we're looking at some geometries of which would be better actually putting it on the bottom or on the top. Um, yeah. Oh, really cool. I, I love the concept of this. I can't wait to see uh, more testing from your team come out for that. What else do you want to jump into? Um, I'd love to jump into our algae detector. Um, if you want to take a look for now, I'll point you to the screen while they're getting set up. Um, this is our current algae end effector. Um, and they, we're, what we're considering is trying to get the algae into the net from our, our elevator, even though it wasn't an initial goal. And we're doing that by hopefully, oh, this might be the wrong video. Let's try that one. That's the right one. Um, by instead having a little bit of kick to it on the end. Um, and so it'll go to the top of the elevator, and then it should spit, spit its ball out um, once it's ready. I, I think I have the wrong video up here, so we're just gonna we're just gonna show you. All right, so this prototype uh, definitely seen from a lot of other teams. Definitely taking inspiration. Uh, we have been calling it the Big C, um, <laughs> but the idea is yeah. So we have two different rollers, one on top, one on bottom. It's gonna be angled. We kind of decided that a 50 degree angle was something that we found worked nicely. But yeah, the idea is is on our way up on the reef while our elevator moves up. This is just gonna grab on, suck it in, and now it's ours. Um, right now we're actually working on trying to turn our C into, not a C, and instead have one independent roller on top and one deployable arm to create that sense of a C, but also keep it small. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now I will redirect you to the screen one more time um, where you will see the, um, the, the correct video pulled up this time, um, which will show you our uh, algae spit out system. Um, we're hoping to get a couple feet off of that, so our elevator only has to go up to the height of L4, and then the algae end effector can be on the top of it and kind of jump it into the net. Um, similar to the, the West Coast Products competitive uh, concept that came out by recently, which would be pretty cool. Then do you want to, do we have coral mechanisms today? Um, we do have, yeah, so 
this is a design that we right now um, are a little bit not looking to use, but it is definitely a very interesting design. Um, it was very much inspired by 254 in, I think, 2019 um, for their hatch mechanism. But the idea is, is you have two rollers that are spinning in opposite directions and it goes and then now it's yours. Um, it was one of those prototypes that just kind of like happened on a whim, um, but it worked really good. It didn't exactly fit with our archetype immediately, but it's definitely something we're still considering. And uh, yeah. We wanted to make sure to highlight that one as it was a little different from what we've seen. Um, do you want to move into programming now? Yeah, of course. Um, so over uh, the recent while, we've been working on uh, getting Advantage Scope up, up and running. We played around with it for a bit last year, but with this uh, off season, we really wanted to get Advantage Scope up and running. Uh, if you look at the video, this is uh, what Liam actually did recently, where he used augmented reality to project uh, Advantage Scope's readings uh, into uh, his living room. So. It was really fun to see, but um, that was a lot of uh, collecting data, simulating. That has been a lot of our off season. Um, so this was a really uh, cool and new thing that we've been doing. And then with that, we've also been using our, our FOM or uh, figure of merit, um, which has been a system that we can uh, take a bunch of readings. Uh, we can take uh, limelight readings, uh, such as it's offset from center. Uh, how far away it is, uh, and we can use that to figure out a more accurate uh, way in which of those figures we want to follow more. So we've been using that to, uh, most recently we figured uh, how, out how to do an auto-align system. Um, so last year, uh, we were still playing around with some of the mechanisms from that. So uh, if you look at the screen, uh, we uh, coded a way to uh, automatically align with the amp. Uh, and we're hoping to use this in this upcoming season for autos and uh, coral uh, to help us uh, align faster and have more reliable uh, placing. So very excited to be using that. Another concept we're looking to use for the reliable placing is using a distance sensor. Um, and so if you take a look at the screen, I'm going to go ahead and show you. We have this little diagram here. This is on our Open Alliance page, of course, for like everything we've talked about today pretty much is. Um, and you will see that uh, the, the, we're planning on putting four distance sensors on our robot, two per, two per side. Um, and so red here, red, red here represents a sensor that has not been triggered. So it is not seeing something in front of it and green has been triggered. And so the idea is that we're going to want a robot in this state where one is not triggered and the other three are to know exactly where we are on the reef. So even if the reef has been damaged a little bit, even if our odometry isn't perfect for some reason in that match, we still have a perfect way to go up to the reef, slide over until our sensors detect the right color, um, and then it'll move its elevator up, place its coral, and automatically move back. That's our goal for that. Yeah. yeah, we're very excited. Our goal is to, by week one, have a uh, four, uh, four coral auto. So uh, we're shooting high, but uh, we think it is a uh, manageable. Uh, here on Omythic, we've often been uh, a little lax with our autos. So this year, we're really putting in the work to uh, start building up our autos as early as possible. Actually, as I speak, people are working on autos right now in the programming room. So uh, I can't wait to go back and see what they're going to be working on. But uh, yeah, we're also as a programming team trying to bring back uh, an autonomous award from one of the competitions we're going to. Uh, we are really excited this year, I think, is a great year for us to flourish with our autos. So, And something you'll notice is we're taking the FOM system and the Advantage Scope stuff. A lot of what we're doing is building off of what other teams have already done. And we're so grateful for all of the resources that are already out. I know, uh, I know Advantage Scope is developed by Mechanical Advantage, who is an Open Alliance team. Um, and then the FOM system, which is a figure of merit system, uh, has was a, an idea presented by Orbit, uh, which was in one of their um, presentations. So we're and we're doing a lot of building off of teams like Rembrandt, teams like um, the Panther Bots, and all everyone on Open Alliance has given us so much inspiration, and we're loving to give it back to everyone. 
Yeah, so, and, we, yeah. and we love everything that you've uh, documented so far in your Chief Delphi blog, so make sure you are following along with No Mythic on that as well. Something I want to ask you all before we wrap up here is that you mentioned that you are playing week one, right, and then you're playing week five. I, I love the objectives here coming into week one. Do you have kind of a layout of like, hey, by week one, this is what we want to accomplish, and but then by week five, we want to do more or anything like that? Or where's kind of your vision at between your first event and your second event looking? That's a great question, Tree. Yeah, so um, from a build perspective, a lot of these things, like picking up from the ground of either game piece or processor or scoring into the barge, those are things where we really said, great, we want to build that simple robot that's reliable and can do all of the things we said perfectly for week one. And then in between week one and week five, we have that nice chunk of time to say, oh, actually, we do want to pick up core from the ground or, oh, we actually want to have that algae um, intake on the ground. So that's going to be our real time to say, great, let's dive into that work. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about auto improvements? Yeah. So uh, I already said that we uh, want to go in with a four coral auto. Um, that is kind of our big week one goal. Uh, I think going into week five, we start. We want to start improving uh, speed and everything of autos. Just always, you know, making sure they're better, getting more coral. Uh, we also want to pursue maybe making uh, more creative autos, such as uh, say our teammate can't leave. Uh, we want to maybe help our teammate leave. Uh, if we want to do something with algae during autos, we want to look at week one and see did people do any creative things with those, uh, and then start implementing into those into our autos. Uh, but largely, our goal going into week five would be to uh, figure out faster ways to get that coral onto the uh, centerpiece. I would also like to mention um, compatibility. Week one, you don't see a lot of autos. They're really small or they're, they're really confined. Uh, by the time you get to week five, and especially champs, we're seeing autos that are flying across the field. Looking at these year's paths, it's going to be really hard not to collide into other robots. And so I think we're going to spend a lot of time looking at how to make creative autos that work around other people and what, what we're seeing. Well, no method. thank you so much for taking time to showcase all your awesome progress so far. I love the ambition that goes into it, but it's very calculated as well, too. So I can't wait to see what you continue to do with that. We're going to have you back on here in just about three weeks, so we can't wait to see that progress, of course, here on the Open Alliance show. But as I mentioned, make sure you're following along on their Cheap Delphi blog as well, too, to see all their progress. So thanks a lot, good luck, and we'll see you in three weeks. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Andy Mark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to andymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.